dividend stocks. So this year I've collected thousands of dollars in dividend payments thanks to just a couple of good dividend stocks. But picking out the best dividend stocks can be pretty confusing because there's just so many across the board. So today I'm gonna share some strong dividend stocks to watch for 2022. So why just 2022 you might ask? Well, because the cost of getting the dividend stocks changes because the stock price might fluctuate or the market conditions might change for that company. So it's always best to keep up to date before considering any stocks for its dividends. Now, let's get started. Wait, 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 but first let's talk about just chasing the highest dividend stocks. Now that's actually really easy to find because you just pull up a spreadsheet of all the company's dividend yields and just filter by the highest dividend yields. Even websites like Market Index, which is one of my favorites to use for stock research, has a page dedicated to finding the highest dividend stocks. And on the ASX, it's actually usually mining companies that take out the top spots. So last year, the mining company Fortescue Metals had the biggest dividend yield. But that happened when the iron ore price was extremely high, record high in fact. And since then, the stock price of FMG has dropped a bit. So if you were to go and buy FMG now, you wouldn't get anywhere near the advertised dividends the next time that they pay. And that is what we call a dividend trap. But I'm gonna try and cancel that out though because I'm gonna try and adjust the dividend yields based on the stock price at the time that they paid out. And so that way, it's a much closer predictor of the dividend yields for that stock. So a couple of conditions for my filter is that the dividend yield must be more than 5% and its dividend stability must be more than 90% as well. And that means that it hasn't really missed a payment in the last 10 years and it's been pretty consistent. Now I'm also gonna organize this by the month of payout. So if you own a few of these, then they'll pay out every month, which kind of feels more like a salary being paid, which is always a good thing. Now let's start with January, which doesn't really have a lot of choices, but I will go with Vanguard High Yield, Metcash and Shopping Centers Australia. They're all generally pretty good dividend stocks that all pay around five to 6% yield. Now the Vanguard one is especially a good stock because that's an ETF that diversifies into blue chip companies companies that pay good dividends. And it pays quarterly as well, which I personally think is better than being paid out half yearly. So moving on to February, February is more of a property company's month for dividends with companies like Center Group, GPT Group, and Stocklands. But there's also JB Hi-Fi for a bit of variety in the retail sector, and they actually pay more dividend yield than the other three. Now, Sydney Airport would also normally be here, but that looks like it's gonna be sold off to an investment company. Company, so I've kept that off the list here. Now March is a huge company for dividends, so I'm gonna have to get rid of my face here. So the most generous company is BHP at 12% yield. That's followed by AGL Energy with 10%, but the company has been struggling and will likely split into two soon, so it might be quite volatile until then. Then we have Horizon, Bendigo and Adelaide Bank, Illumina and Vicinity Centers. I've also included Australia's biggest bank, CBA here, because it's just such a safe investment, even if its dividend yields falls just short of the 5% limit. And also Origin Energy might be something to consider over AGL as a more stable energy stock. Now in April, we have the superstar of dividend stocks, FMG as the clear winner with a massive 24% in dividend yield. And Rio Tinto comes in second with 14% yield. Now before you go rushing into buying them, I'll just mention that this is because of record iron prices last year, and it doesn't look like it's gonna be the same in 2022. I would guess that 2022 would only give around half the dividend payout of last year, so you probably need to factor that in. Now another super dividend stock was Super Retail Group, which owns stores like BCF and Super Cheap Auto. Then we have Suncorp, the second Vanguard high yield payment, and Spark New Zealand bringing up the rear back to my face. So May is actually pretty limited with only two companies paying out good dividends in that month. So first we have Cromwell Property Group, which is a REIT stock paying around 8.5% yield. And then we have Harvey Norman. 
Now that stayed on my list because it pays quite a high dividend, but it's been paying out more in dividends than it's been generating. So I personally don't really know anyone that shops at Harvey Norman. I know lots of people that go to JB Hi-Fi, for example. So a few warning bells for me on that one. Now, June is almost completely barren of 5% yield stocks, but Osnet pays out 4.3% if you're desperate for some mid-year income. Osnet owns and operates the electrical transmission network in Victoria. So I think they are generally quite a stable option. Okay, July is the month of bank payouts. We got Westpac, ANZ, and NAB all paying around 5% yield here. If you want to know the difference between the big four banks, check out my video here. Actually, in July, the biggest yield is the building materials company CSR with an 8% dividend yield. And with Australia's love for housing and renovations, that looks set to continue in 2022 as well. We also have the third payment of Vanguard High Yield and the engineering firm Simic Group as well. Now for August and the rest of the year, they're going to be repeated now because it's the second dividend payments of all these stocks. Now I'll keep showing the visuals, but let me rattle off some dividend facts that you might not know. For example, dividend franking is something that only Australia, New Zealand, and only a few other countries have. So the US actually don't have this tax benefit. Any dividends paid to shareholders gets double taxed. And for this reason, US stocks have much lower dividends than ASX stocks, as they prefer to invest and grow their share price instead. Dividend hunting is the practice of buying stocks on the day that it goes ex-dividend, holding it for one day, then selling it off straight away. So this qualifies you to get the dividend, but the share price usually jumps up on the X date and then falls on the following day. And that fall is usually around the dividend yield anyway. So the gain in getting an instant dividend actually cancels out against your capital gains loss. So this is something that I don't really recommend. Dividend reinvestment plans or DRIP on the other hand are something that I definitely encourage. It lets you receive more shares in the company instead of getting paid in cash. The reason why it's so good is because it's brokerage free and you get a discount on the market price of the share. So even if you sell it straight away, you'll still make more than getting a cash dividend. Keep in mind that DRIPs are still taxed as if you did take the cash though. All right, so that's the summary of the best dividend stocks on the ASX for 2022. Let me know what you think about this list and tell me if I've missed anything that you think is just as good down in the comments below. Don't forget to drop a like on this video if you liked it and subscribe for more investing content like this for Australians. So thanks for watching and as always, I'll see you in the next video.